Hello, everybody. It's good that we can worship together, even in these trying circumstances. It's good that we can be together as one in the Lord, because he is the one who unites us. He's the one who binds us together, and he is the essence of our faith. And you know, that is always good news. And I have some other good news for you. We have just been given permission to open the church for private prayer only, but we're going to open it up starting next Friday, the 18th of September. We're going to open it up from 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Now, you're welcome to come, and I will have sent a letter out to all the elders who should have disseminated all this information to you. Um, but sometimes they can't do it immediately. So whether you hear from the elders or hear from me, please plan, if you can, to come for private prayer next Friday, the 18th of September, from 11 to 12 o'clock. Now, because there's a limited number of people who can come, um, the maximum number allowed by the Scottish Government is 50. So because of that, you'll have to phone Anne McMillan and um, book up a place. But please do consider coming for private prayer. Now, it is private prayer, so you'll be coming, you'll be taken to your seat, and you'll be seated there for as long as you, you wish. You'll come in one door and out the other. And elders will be in duty to, to give you all the hand gel and make sure you've got masks on and, and to supply you with everything like that. And there are no cushions in the pews because we've had to remove these as well. So if you do physically need a cushion, please bring one, but take it away with you again. So if you need further information, you can phone Anne as you book up and get that information. But that would be good, and it'd be good to come here because we need prayer, private prayer and prayer for the church. So now we're going to begin our worship by hearing and joining in with, I hope, um, a, a, a young man who's called, I've um, got it down here, Aka Peldridge. Aka Peldridge. Um, I've come across him on the internet. Only one man, but he sings four parts, and it's beautiful. And he's going to sing The Lord's My Shepherd, and he's singing it in the version Orlington, which happens to be my favourite. Um, but do please listen to him and join in with him, because it's a wonderful hymn with wonderful words and a good tune, and you can worship the Lord with us, with the Lord's my shepherd. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. Pastures green, he leadeth me. In pastures green, he leadeth me. The quiet waters by. My soul he doth restore. Oh, the 
surely follow me. And in God's house forevermore. And in God's house forevermore. My dwelling place shall That was a beautiful hymn. There are times when I listen to it and it makes the hairs in my arms stand up. It's just beautiful and I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. But let us pray. Father God, we are overwhelmed at your love for us, your care for every minute of every day, your leading and guiding us, for we truly are your sheep and you are our shepherd. Lord Jesus, help us to hear your word today. Help us to hear what you have to say to each of us personally and individually. And help us, Lord, to receive your love, perhaps even your challenge, certainly your presence. And Lord, as we come, we acknowledge our need of you. We need reconnected with our faith. We need the divine touch of knowing that we belong to you and that you are our Lord. We need reminded that we are part of a bigger body of the church, that we are part of your worldwide church and that we are all one with you. And oh Lord our God, perhaps we need a remembrance of your forgiveness. Lord Jesus, we know you paid the price and the sacrifice on the cross. Forgive us for all the things that we mentioned just now, all the things that spring to our mind just now, all the human things for which we need forgiveness. And, O oh Lord, as we are conscious of you clearing us, wiping the slate clean, forgiving us, and encouraging us with your love. We praise and we thank you. And we pray that we can continue our worship, listening to your word, praying, praising and reading, and uniting with you. Lord Jesus, in your precious name, we ask this prayer. Amen. Now, I don't know if um, some of our younger people have been watching in or not. And last week, I, I did the little thing with the candles, you know, hoping that, that that might be of interest to them. This week, I have something um, different, something interesting. And it comes from the Bricks Books show. In other words, it uses bricks to, to um, relay a parable. And it's the parable of the lost sheep. And it's done with Lego but it's still God's parable, it's still Jesus' um, words, and it still tells us the story of the lost sheep. Welcome to the Brick Books Show. Today we are going to be thinking about a story that Jesus told, which reminds us just how much God loves us. So without further ado, we present the Brick Books retelling of the lost sheep. Once there was a shepherd who had 100 sheep. He loved them dearly and when he called them they followed him. He always knew the best places to go so they had plenty of grass to eat and water to drink. Every morning, he would let them into the field from the pen and count them. One, two, three, four, he said. Then continued counting until he got to 97, 98, 99, 100. Then he was happy because he knew he had all his sheep. 
However, one day he was counting, and when he got to 96, 97, 98, 99, he stopped because he did not have 100 sheep. He checked again, and yes, one was missing. One of his sheep was lost. He was in a panic, so he left the sheep in the field and went to look for the lost sheep. First he checked with his friends to see if they had seen his lost sheep, but they had not. Next he went to the river to see if the sheep was there, but there was no sign of the sheep. Then he went to the desert to see if the sheep was there. He even climbed a large rock and looked around, but there was no sign of the lost sheep. He then went into the local town, but the sheep was not there. Finally, he decided to explore the forest. Suddenly, he heard a noise. It was his sheep. He ran to the sheep and they were so happy to see each other. He led the sheep back through the town, across the desert, beside the river. When they came to his friends, the shepherd said, Come and celebrate with me, for I have found my lost sheep. So they returned home and had a huge big party and everyone was glad that the lost sheep was home safe and sound. Wasn't it great that the shepherd found his lost sheep? The shepherd loved his sheep so much that he travelled for miles in order to find his lost sheep. In the Bible we are told that God loves us so much that he sent Jesus to find us and bring us home to be with God forever. It also says that there is a big party in heaven every time someone understands just how much God loves them. We have so much to thank God for and so my puppet friends are going to help us with a song called Thank You.
It was so good to see you all today and I hope to see you all soon. Take care and God bless. Bye. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you realised as well that we are all at some time in our life lost sheep and that Jesus comes after us no matter what age we are or what stage we're at. He comes after us and he picks us up and he loves us and you know he forgives us. So we're going to read a parable that's about forgiveness and mercy and it's from Matthew chapter 18 verses 21 to 35 and this is the last part of um, chapter 18. Right at the, the beginning, there's um, a whole section on the lost sheep and also a bit about forgiving your brother if he sins against you. And this point, Jesus takes the, the, the teaching further. So listen for the word of the Lord. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and he began to choke him. Pay me back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Amen. Our moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland, the Right Reverend Dr Martin Fair, has been doing a series of interviews that you can um, catch up on or, or see every week on the Church of Scotland website. And the series of interviews has the title, It's a Fair Question. And a couple of days ago, he had an interview with two Church of Scotland ministers who were refugees who's seeking asylum from uh, Pakistan. They are Reverend Aftab Gohar and his cousin, Reverend Rahil Arif. And Martin was asking them questions about what prompted them to, to come to, to Great Britain and particularly to Scotland. And it transpired that they came over in 2008 um, because they wanted to come to a Christian country. They thought this was a really Christian country. And they had their eyes open as to how secular it really is. However, they are happy to be here. And when Martin asked the fair question, what about the tragedy that you experienced? Then Aftab explained that in 2013, he was told that his mother, his nephew, his niece, two uncles and many family members and friends were killed 
when two suicide bombers came into the church and set off their bombs. It was among 122 of them who were killed in Peshawar. And Martin said, now I know it's a fair question, but maybe, maybe it's um, unkind as well. Have you forgiven them? Or, you know, did you forgive them? Or, and how long did it take you to forgive him? And Aftab, whose mother was killed, said straight away, I forgave them immediately. And Martin was, was understandably, you know, wondering about this. And Aftab said, that's what my mother taught me. That's the Christian way. Forgiveness immediately is a Christian way. I don't know about you, but sometimes I can manage to forgive immediately, and other times I have to force myself to forgive. I have to remember that it's a Christian way, and then just do it. Whether I feel like it or not, I do it. So then Peter asked um, Jesus the question, but how many times have I to forgive my brother? Seven times? Jesus said, 77 times. In other words, number seven is the number of perfection. In other words, give perfect forgiveness always. You know, that's sometimes hard to do because people hurt us and hurt us all the time and sometimes hurt us on a daily basis. But you know, we have to forgive not so much for their sake, but for our sake, so that we can have the peace of the Lord. So we have to do that in, in every area of our life. But it gets a bit harder when it comes to the issue of money. Have you noticed how that is always a cause of serious division in families and in relationships? And perhaps we all know the phrase, neither a borrower nor a lender be. And the second part of that line is, for, for loan oft loses both itself and friend. Yes, neither a borrower nor a lender be. But you know, there are times in our life when we do need the help of a loan of some sort. I don't know about you, but personally, I don't know anybody in the whole world, I personally don't know anybody who hasn't had to have recourse to a loan at some time in their life. But it is a, an awkward subject and it's a, it's a painful area. And if somebody doesn't pay us back, it hurts and it's difficult to forget it. Yet Jesus uses the serious subject of money to talk about the serious subject of the kingdom of heaven. And in that parable, he talks of a man who owed 10,000 talents. In today's money, that's millions of pounds. And he couldn't pay it. So the, the, the king says, um, right, okay, you and your wife and your children and all that you own will be sold to, um, so that I can re recoup my money. And the thing is that in those days, if you had a servant or a slave, you could sell them. That the people had the authority then. And you know, if that had happened to that man and all his family, they would all have been split up as well. So the man understandably falls on his knees and begs him because he couldn't pay. But the amazing thing is that that king had pity on the man he showed mercy to him. He cancelled the debt and let him go. Wow. How many of us can remember times in our life, and maybe even right now, when we appreciate, would have appreciated our debts being cancelled just like that? How many of us would have appreciated a time when the slate was wiped clean, when we had a fresh start, and when we could try and get our life back in order again and not get into that trap of debt again? But you know, that makes us think this parable is about the kingdom of heaven. So what kind of debt is our king prepared to write off? But then that, that man goes out and he finds somebody who owes him a hundred denarii in our equivalent money today. It's only a few pounds. And he grabs him and he chokes him and he says, pay back what you owe me. I find it interesting that he didn't just ask for his money, but he actually tried to choke the man. You know, 
monetary problems are like choking us. They choke the life out of us. They, they steal our joy as well. Monetary problems is a serious issue and it always has been. And even nowadays in today's society, and people need to get help for that serious issue. People need to get help as well for the serious issue of their faith and um, th their spirit. So the second man falls on his knees and begs for mercy, just as the first man did. The first example, we find forgiveness and a cancelling of debt. And that is a reflection of how heaven deals with those who fall on their knees and beg for mercy. You know, whatever trouble you're in, no matter what it is, how small or how big, even if it's financial issues, fall on your knees, beg for mercy and ask the Lord for help and you will be guided. You see, every time in the Bible, every single time anyone fell on their knees before Jesus, they received the healing they requested, or their forgiveness, or both. You know, maybe we need to humble ourselves, especially in this time. It's the Lord telling us we need to get back to basics and relationship with him. But we need to humble ourselves and kneel before the Lord, Kneel. That's the position that the Bible gives us. In fact, there are various positions for prayer. Moses was well known for being on his face before the Lord in prayer. I remember years ago that um, right in front of this very communion table, and I'm walking up and down doing whatever I was doing, and the Lord said to me, kneel. And I walked up and down again, and I thought, no, I, but that thought would not go away that I had to kneel before the congregation here and I was arguing with myself you know is this your own stupid imagination I'm and I thought right just do it but then the next thought came well I managed to get down and back up again so I held on to the communion table knelt down was down there for a second or two then I stood up and started walking about again now nobody even commented on that, mentioned it, perhaps never noticed it. Maybe it was only something the Lord was asking me to do to see if I would be obedient. Maybe the Lord's asking you to humble yourself in some way to show that you are obedient and that he is our king and master. You know, verses 26 and 27 are just like our relationship with Jesus. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled his debt, and let him go. You know, we are forgiven a debt that we can never repay. It doesn't matter how small our sin is. If Take the image of somebody who has on a beautiful, perfect white dress, one even small black mark on that dress ruins the look of it. No matter how small the darkness of our soul or the sin in our spirit, we are forgiven a debt we can never repay. And when we know how much we are forgiven, we should then forgive others. Now that first man either forgot, because you know sometimes we do forget, how much we have been forgiven. But he either forgot or he didn't fully appreciate what he had been forgiven. We need to realise that withholding compassion from others excludes us from the kingdom of heaven. Think about that. Withholding compassion from others excludes us from the kingdom of heaven. You see, that wicked servant was then cast out that the master was furious with him for not showing mercy and forgiveness to, um, to others. So that he was put into jail for the jailers to torture him until he could pay back. And you know, the point is, he couldn't pay back. He couldn't pay back in real life. He's certainly not going to be able to pay back if he's in, in jail and, and the torturers are with him. You know, that's like a kind of self-induced hell and one from which he could never hope to escape. That is how God himself will treat us 
unless we forgive our brothers and sisters from our heart. You know, that's what the Church of Scotland minister said. His mother taught him to forgive from the heart because that was a Christian way. And if we do not forgive from our heart, there is a heavy price to pay. There is a torture to be experienced. You know, we are saved not because of anything that we can do, but because of the mercy of God and nothing else. We can never give enough or do enough or love enough or serve enough. We belong to the kingdom of heaven only because Jesus paid the price for us. Only because Jesus paid the price for us. So that we can have peace in our lives, peace in our soul, and peace for eternity. There are ways of being a Christian. Forgiveness is a key one for the peace in our soul. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we're going to worship God and I hope you enjoy the next hymn and sing along with it. It is, it is well with my soul.
Let us pray. Oh yes, Lord, peace is truly like a river running through our soul. Peace is truly like the river of your love, giving us fresh enthusiasm and excitement, contentment and peace. And we pray that that river will run through our lives, that we can extend that river of love to everyone we meet. And Lord, we pray for your teaching this morning, that we can truly forgive as we are forgiven, that we can truly love as we are loved. And Lord, we pray, we pray that that love and forgiveness will be extended to a world in need. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are all around us and our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world. And we pray, Lord, for those who are persecuted, that they can know your river of love and your peace in whatever circumstance they find themselves. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ in Beirut, in Lebanon, in those who have had to run for their lives. We pray for all um, who are persecuted. We pray for every refugee throughout the world. And Lord, there are millions of them. We pray for this troubled world. We pray for all the troubles in America. For the great upsets there, Lord. Let there be peace and let reason reign and not the rule of the gun. And Lord, we pray for peace in Britain. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will never leave us and that we can always live in hope. We pray for those for whom financial concerns is an almighty burden. Lord, grant them hope and light at the end of the tunnel. Help them to, to face up to their needs, to face up to their situation and to get the help that they need. And oh Lord, we praise you that your love is always there for us. We pray your mighty blessing upon your church here in Johnston High. We pray your blessing upon each and every single one of us. We pray, Lord, that you can hear our prayers and that you will be with us every minute of every day. We pray for our young people, those who are unable to come to their organisations or even the lighthouse, the Sunday school. And Lord, we pray for those who are back at school primary school, secondary school and further education. Lord, be with them. And in this troubled world, let our young people be unafraid, but yet be sensible in the, the current circumstances. Lord, let your blessing be upon our Queen, upon all who serve her and throughout this land. And we ask these and all our prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. And we join together in the words which he taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we're going to listen to a virtual choir. It's called Down to the River. And it talks of how we go down to the river of God's love to confess our sins and to be washed clean of them. Down to the River. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, 
show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Come on, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Wasn't that an amazing song and an amazing hymn and an amazing message? And we go with the love of God in our hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain in your heart forever. Amen. <laughs>